I have good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news first. It has occurred to me that I have an internal negative bias towards cheap black plastic receivers. I just don't like them and I never recommend them. So what's the good news? I might have finally found an affordable Sony amplifier to challenge that bias of mine. So let's talk about that negative bias, how it came to be, and whether or not this Sony STR-DH190 receiver will change my mind forever. Now let's talk about where this sort of negative internal bias towards cheap black plastic receivers comes from. Um, I'm sort of a child of the 80s and I grew up buying these cheap black plastic receivers. Like, and they were made by all different sort of brands, Sony, Yamaha, um, like Denon. And then there were even some that were like way off brand names that you know you can't even remember now. And it, it reminds me of like sort of the misery of having to go shop for these things. Like it was never fun. It was never exciting to go try to find one of these receivers like you'd have to go to a big box store like if you want to throw it way back like a circuit city <laughs> or best buy or even walmart or something along those lines and you would they would just have rows of them and you couldn't really tell like what the different features were they just all looked alike they had the the big plastic knobs and the and the buttons and there was just nothing really exciting i think i even remember being at like a a best buy one time and you could press a button like it, it, they would all be hooked up to a set of speakers and then you could press a button to see how they sounded different with each one um and that kind of goes back to the pricing like i always felt like they were more expensive than they really should be based on the value you were getting and definitely the way they sounded to me they always had sort of like a more digital sound than an analog one and they were often really clunky and they had really just you know not the best features overall and even more importantly they weren't reliable i remember just i had multiple ones that you would wake up one day and all of a sudden they were in protection mode and you couldn't figure out why and you had already thrown the manual away forever ago and so you couldn't figure out how to get that protection mode off sometimes there were like these weird codes you could hit on the front like multiple buttons and that would help like get it get it to go out of protection mode but if you didn't have the manual you couldn't remember that this would often predate the internet when it was hard to figure all this stuff out and you would take it maybe to consider having it repaired but it would cost more to repair than it was to even have the unit in the first place and so they just were disposable people got rid of them you go into a thrift store and there would just be mountains of them and this is what i think of when i think of cheap black plastic receivers all of this previous life experience with these receivers has sort of helped me you know have this negative internal bias towards them and that's why whenever somebody points one out to me online and says should i buy this i just genuinely immediately say no it's a cheap black plastic receiver do not buy it but i have had more than enough friends start to message me and say hey, what do you think of this Sony receiver? It's very affordable and it looks like it would handle everything I need and I could play my records with it and hook up my speakers, blah, blah, blah. And for a while, I would always wanna say, don't buy it. It's a Sony, it's cheap, it's black, it's plastic, you don't want it. But I've had enough people ask me that I finally decided to just buy one myself and listen to it so that I could give people an honest opinion of what I think about this receiver. After a few weeks listening to this receiver, what have I determined? Before we talk about that, let me grab the camera and I'm gonna get up close and show you the features of this receiver. And then we'll talk a little bit more about whether or not this receiver has proving my initial assumptions right or wrong. Looking at the front of the receiver, this Sony is currently retailing for $199, but I actually bought it on sale for just $148 shipped. So, Keep your eye out for sales on this unit. Now this comes in at 100 watts per channel and it can power speakers from six ohms all the way up to 16 ohms. Now it's worth pointing out that you need to set the speaker impedance on this and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But looking at the front of the unit, powered on, it's got a pretty fast response time. Your speaker selectors are here. Here are your tuning mode and tuning up and down buttons if you are into FM. Um, this is a display button, which basically just tells you what current input you're on. And you've got a dimmer here so you can darken 
turn it off or brighten the display. Here's a boot Bluetooth pairing button here. Press that and then you can start to pair your Bluetooth device, which was really easy to do. Um, and then there's a peer direct mode button over here. We do this. It turns off the lights on the front of the unit, which uh, supposedly helps remove any interference in the audio playback. Put that back on. Now you'll also notice down here, you've got a headphone jack. There is a 3.5 millimeter input here. So you could, it says portable in right above that. You could plug in a portable player uh, and play it through this as well. This knob here is your input selector. So uh, the way this works is you can go in and change the names of the inputs via the remote, but it comes out of the box saying input one, input two, input three or four, and that would be the portable down here. And then of course the built-in phono stage. Um, and then FM tuner and Bluetooth, okay? Uh, this giant knob over here is your volume knob. Now, of everything with this receiver, this is actually my least favorite feature right here just because it reminds me of some of those cheap uh, black plastic receivers back in the day. It's just so, like, rigid. Like, I'm used to vintage receivers with this really smooth knob, even some that click. This doesn't click or anything, but it just feels cumbersome to turn. But who knows, maybe that will loosen up over time. Now, one of the things you wanna make sure you do is do not lose this remote control. Um, I'm actually really happy with this remote control. And I, I used to always watch like review product review videos myself and think it was so silly if people would talk about remotes, but I have paid, this unit comes in like 150 bucks on sale. I have paid three, $400 for manufacturers uh, of other units and their remote controls are so cheap and plasticky and they just, you lose them. Um, but you wanna make sure you don't lose this remote control. For instance, you can, your tone controls are not gonna be on the unit itself. You're gonna do that here with the remotes. You can adjust the bass um, and treble in that manner. Um, what else, there's the pure direct button is on here as well. So you can turn that off and on. Um, it's also got the dimmer, should you want it. Let's get back to bright there so you can see it. Um, now, one of the things that I wanted to point out straight away was when I mentioned the speaker impedance. So when you first hook up this um, receiver to your speakers, you're going to want to make sure that you go into the amp menu here and see it says speaker impedance. You want to just make sure you set it to either 8 ohms or 6 ohms, okay? So look at your, um, uh, look at your speaker information and determine whether or not they're 6 or 8 ohms and uh, connect it or, excuse me, make that setting in there. Um, again, lots of other great stuff on this remote control. You can do your Bluetooth pairing there. You can switch between your inputs and your phono, um, your speakers, and all those sort of things. So if you get this, definitely do not lose this remote control. One other thing worth noting uh, on this unit in, guard, in regards to the phono input, and that is when you, they have a phono offset here. So basically, like if your turntable just plays a lot lower than the volume of the other inputs, and it's kind of annoying to go, every time I switch between my CD player and my turntable, I have to turn it way up or way down, vice versa. You can offset that volume increase in the amp menu here. You reach phono offset, and then you basically can just set that, you can increase it, you know, plus two, plus six, I like to do this while I'm listening to my turntable so I can kind of actually hear the, the decibel change, but this will keep it so like if I go up maybe plus two and then I switch over to my CD player, it's not quite a huge jump in sound difference. Okay, there's nothing too special to see back here on the rear of the receiver. You've got an FM antenna connection here, which they supply you with an antenna. This is actually USB, but this is for service only. It's not for input. Uh, your phono input is here with your uh, ground connection. Your four audio inputs are here. There's an output if you wanted to run this to a cassette deck or something and um, record whatever's playing through the amplifier. Then here are your two sets of speakers, speaker A and speaker B. Above this, it tells you, it says C instruction manual for impedance selection. Um, you look back here and it, based on where your speaker impedances are and how many sets of speakers you're using, that will tell you how to select the proper um, setting 
using the remote control that I showed you earlier. So be sure to look at that before you just blindly set up your speakers, especially if you're setting up two sets of speakers, you're gonna to wanna to look at this and make sure you get the settings done properly. Just one more quick thing to note on the back of the receiver is that there is no digital input. There's no coaxial or anything along those lines, which isn't too surprising given the price point of this, but if you've got, say, a, a Blu-ray player or something and you wanna hook up via a coax, to this unit you won't be able to. You'll need to get an external DAC and run it that way and then use one of these inputs. Back to my original question. Was I wrong about this receiver? The answer is simply yes. I was comparing its looks and low price to my past negative experiences. The reality is this Sony receiver sounded great right out of the box. Immediately I was surprised to hear the adequate sound staging and after a few minutes tweaking the treble and bass controls, I enjoyed a long listening session without ever experiencing any fatigue. Now, this amp isn't going to provide you with that 3D imaging that more expensive gear may provide, but like I said, it's gonna be a great sounding receiver for anyone that's interested in getting into hi-fi at an affordable price. It'll even work great for someone that wants to have a backup unit in the event their more expensive gear ever has to take a trip to the repair shop. The only things that I didn't care for on this receiver was that rigid volume knob on the front and the fact when you flip it around on the rear, there's no digital coaxial input. But other than those two things, everything else about this receiver from the ease of setup to easy Bluetooth connectivity to the great sounding phono stage and the sturdy, powerful remote control makes this receiver easy for me to recommend to any beginners that are just getting interested in hi-fi at an affordable price. Now, one of the other options other than buying a Sony receiver at this price is the recent uptick in popularity in the small Class D amplifiers that are being made in China. I've actually reviewed a few of those on my channel. If you'd be interested in watching one of those reviews, you can do so by clicking here.